Panginoon aming Diyos, kami po ay nagpupuri at nagpapasalamat sa inyo sa umagang ito. Lord, we thank you for your faithfulness. We thank you for your kindness in our lives. Uh, Gayun din po, Panginoon, humihingi po kami ng kapatawaran sa aming mga kasalanan. Linisin niyo po, Panginoon, ang aming puso't isipan upang maging karapat dapat po kami sa inyo sa araw na ito. Lord, you can see what is in our hearts, Panginoon. Katagpo inyo nga po, Panginoon, ang aming mga pangailangan, Panginoon. Pero, Panginoon, gusto po namin ipunalangin muna ang aming bansa. Lord, uh, pinagpipray po namin ang mga ang, ang aming mga leaders, Panginoon. Ang aming presidente, Panginoon. Senators, congressmen, down to the barangay officials that you give them wisdom, Panginoon, and strength physically. emotionally and spiritually para Panginoon magampanan po nila Panginoon ang kanilang mga tungkulin 
na naayon po, Panginoon, sa inyong kalooban. Lord, uh, teach them to trust in you, especially in uh, these days, Panginoon, na kami po ay talagang masyadong naapektuhan ng pandemic ng, ng COVID-19. Lord, I'm praying that you help them to to fight this disease, Panginoon. I'm praying for the our scientists, Panginoon. I'm praying for the mga nag-specialize, Panginoon, sa, sa pagsupo ng pandemic, Panginoon, that you give them wisdom, Panginoon, upang malabanan po, Panginoon, namin ang ganitong klaseng um, sitwasyon at pagsubok sa aming buhay, Panginoon. Alam po namin, Panginoon, na kapag uh, kami po ay nagtiwala sa inyo, ay eh, wala pong imposible sa inyo, Panginoon. Lord, I'm also praying for the economy of the Philippines na why sa kabila ng pandemya, Panginoon, eh wag naman po, Panginoon, na sumadsad ang aming ekonomiya, Panginoon. Lord, I'm praying that you bless um, the Filipinos with more jobs, Panginoon, and opportunities sa kabila ng nangyayaring pandemya, Panginoon. And Lord, I'm also praying, Panginoon, for the our frontliners, mga doktor po, mga nurses, mga pharmacists, Panginoon, that you guide them, give them strength, Panginoon, and protect them from, you know, uh, from uh, being uh, infected by this disease, Panginoon, that you uh, would give them a, a kind of protection, Panginoon, na hindi po sila magkakasakit, Panginoon. Lord, I'm praying for their family that uh, nawa ay supportahan po sila, Panginoon, sa pang-araw-araw, sa, sa pagbaka sa COVID-19. Lord, I'm also praying that you um, uh, bless them, Panginoon, give them strength physically, emotionally, and spiritually as well, Panginoon. Lord, I'm also praying na why patuloy nga po kayong magbigay ng cure sa, sa pandemic na ito, especially sa meron daw pong ulit na na nagmimutate po, Panginoon, na another level, a much more higher level ng, ng disease na ito. Lord, um, kayo po siya ang gumawa ng paraan, Panginoon, upang uh, matapos na po itong disease na to Panginoon. And uh, by your grace, Panginoon, ay malalampusa, malalampasan po namin ito ng um, may pagtitiwala sa inyo, Panginoon. Lord, I'm praying for this church. We are praying for this church, Panginoon. Lord, uh, we're praying for our pastors, our leaders, Panginoon. Praying for Pastor Arnel Aristoteles and his family that you uh, guide them, that you give them strength, Panginoon. And uh, Lord, why, um, be, be their provider as well. Ganyan din po sa mga volunteers, sa mga elders, Panginoon, and sa mga members, Panginoon, that you um, meet their needs, Panginoon. Uh, naway, Panginoon, kayo po ang maging magsilbing ilaw, Panginoon, sa mga dark days na kamukha nito, Panginoon. Uh, be our strength, Panginoon, and sa inyo lang po kami umaasa, Panginoon. Lord, um, we're praying also, Panginoon, sa pinagpapay po namin itong gawain na ito, Panginoon, that you, sa kabila ng pandemya, that you would use this um, this um, church effectively, Panginoon, upang makarating po sa mga bahay-bahay ang aming um, online telecast, Panginoon, online worship service, online prayer meeting, that uh, uh, you would uh, use this para mas marami pa po ang makarinig, Panginoon, penetrate, Panginoon, at makarinig ng inyong mananasalita at makakilala po sa inyo bilang Panginoon at sariling tagapagligtas. Lord, we're praying that you um, give us strength, Panginoon. I'm praying that na bigyan niyo po kami ng lakas na loob. Pagtitiwala sa inyo sa kabila ng mga kahirapan na, na nararanasan namin, Panginoon. And Lord, um, We pray, Panginoon, that you would be with us, Panginoon. Every single day, Panginoon, na harapin po namin ang mga challenges na ito. Lord, I'm praying that you bless this 
uh, this day, I pray that you bless this service, Panginoon. Pagpalain niyo po ang aming speaker. Lord, use our speaker mightily, Panginoon, that uh, he would deliver your word effectively at mangusap po, Panginoon, sa amin, Panginoon, at maging hamon at maging blessing po sa amin, Panginoon, ang inyong salita. Lord, uh, pinagpe-pray po namin na pagpalain niyo po, Panginoon, itong araw na ito, pagpalain niyo po, Panginoon, itong service na ito at maging um, kalakasan namin spiritually, Panginoon. Salamat po, Panginoon. Uh, patuloy nga po kayong gumabay. Um, don't let the enemy bother us or use this, Panginoon. But, uh, Lord, pinagpipray po namin uh, ang inyong peacefulness, ang inyong kindness, ang pag-asa ninyo, Panginoon, ang ma-receive po namin. Salamat po, Panginoon. Ang lahat ng ito ay aming ipinapanalangin sa pangalan ni Kristo Jesus. Amen at Amen. We pray that today's message will strengthen your faith. We would love to hear from you. Send us your story through our Facebook page by commenting or clicking the send message button. If you want to know more about our church, be part of a Bible study or discipleship group. Be prayed for or seek spiritual guidance, feel free to get in touch with us through our FB page, GCF Montalban, or send a direct message to Brother Carlo D. Asilo or Pastor Anel G. Aristoteles. If our message and ministry has blessed you and you would like to support us financially, you may give your tithes and offering by bank online transfer or over-the-counter deposit to our Banco de Oro account with account name GCF North Inc. and account number 0102-2800-6618. You may also send your tithes and offerings through Palawan Express, Western Union, Cebuano Lewiller, M. Lewiller, or LBC Padala under the name of Carlo Asilo. Brother Carlo will deposit your sent money to our church video account and he will send you a copy of the deposit slip for accountability purposes. May the Lord bless you as you listen to the message today. Our scripture passage is found in 2 Corinthians chapter 1 verses 3 to 11. Again, our scripture passage is found in 2 Corinthians chapter 1 verses 3 to 11. Praise be to the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of compassion and the God of all comfort, who comforts us in all our troubles so that we can comfort those in any trouble with the comfort we ourselves receive from God. For just as we share abundantly in the sufferings of Christ, so also our comfort abounds through Christ. If we are distressed, it is for your comfort and salvation. If we are comforted, it is for your comfort, which produces in you patient endurance of the same sufferings we suffer. And our hope for you is firm, because we know that just as you share in our sufferings, so also you share in our comfort. We do not want you to be uninformed, brothers and sisters, about the troubles we experience in the province of Asia. We were under great pressure far beyond our ability to endure, so that we despaired of life itself. Indeed. We felt we had received the sentence of death, but this happened that we might not rely on ourselves, but on God, who raises the dead. He has delivered us from such a deadly peril, and He will deliver us again. On Him, we have set our hope that He will continue to deliver us. As you help us by your prayers, then many will give thanks on our behalf for the gracious favor granted us in the answer to the prayer of many. May the Lord bless the reading of His Word. 
Good morning, everyone. This is Pastor Ross Taroha, and uh, today we conclude with our sermon series on the theme prevailing. We have heard of messages on prayer, then uh, perseverance, and now prevailing. Uh, God is in His uh, sovereign will has created us, His people, not only to survive, particularly in this pandemic uh, crisis that we have right now. We were created by God not only to survive this, but we were created to prevail. And that's our theme for the month. And when we talk about prevail, it means for us to succeed, to become overcomers, to become conquerors, to be uh, triumphant uh, in everything that we do for the Lord. God's will for us is for us to prevail, which means to succeed in our preaching, uh, His Word, to overcome the world and its worldliness, to triumph over sin, and to live victoriously. That's the will of God. He created us and He wired us in such a way not only to mere survive, but to really prevail. And that's the, the title of my uh, message right now. I have given the title, Prevailing Beyond Surviving. Prevailing Beyond Surviving. This is based on 2 Corinthians chapter 1, verses 3 to 11. Paul, also during his time, went through such uh, crisis and a lot uh, of, of uh, uh, times, troubled times uh, during his time and as God has allowed him to go through this so that he would not only survive but he will continue to prevail in the same way you know, succeeding in uh, the preaching of God's word overcoming and triumphing over sin and to live victoriously God uh, just allowed Paul to experience a lot of bad things so that Paul would be able to pursue God's will and glorify God. In the same way, God's people, us today, in this 21st century, we are also to prevail beyond surviving. The question is, in what ways do we uh, prevail as God's people? Or in what ways as God's people uh, do we prevail? We prevail as well, first couriers of God's praise second channels of God's comfort third we prevail as catalyst of prayers that's the will of God for us so as God's people just like Paul uh, in what he has learned and what he has written to the church in Corinth he uh, we are to prevail just not just mere surviving. First, let's look at uh, couriers of God's praise. When we say couriers of God's praise, we are messengers, ambassadors of God. And wherever we go, just like Paul, as we work with him and work for him, we always give back the glory and the praise. Wherever we go, regardless of the situation, we praise God. We thank God. In verse 3, it says, Praise be to the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of compassion and the God of all comfort. In some translation, compassion there is mercy, which is very much alike. The Father of mercy and the God of all comfort. Comfort here does, uh, does not necessarily mean uh, a life that is easy and comfortable and relaxation but the word comfort here simply means strength that's the original rendering here so we uh, as God's people we were uh, created and by God we were honed by God to praise God to thank him wherever we go whatever our situation is it is natural and supernatural in us as God's people 
to praise Him and even to thank Him, just like what Paul did. The Apostle Paul, during his time, praised not only a God or the God, but here in this particular verse, he praised the God of the Lord Jesus Christ. That is really something. He's this God that I am serving and worshiping and praising is not only a, a, a mere God in what many people might know. He was simply saying, this is the God of my Lord Jesus Christ. This is the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. So the God who is the Creator, the God who is sovereign, the God who is so powerful, yet the God who is so loving, compassionate, merciful, and kind. That's the kind of God that Paul was praising him. So even, even if Paul go, went through a lot of troubled times, God allowed him to experience trouble in order not only to survive, but to prevail. So the Lord, uh, Paul continued to praise him, and if he praised him during the time and thanked him, so should we. Why don't we? We should, regardless of our situation today. Because the God of Paul, uh, during the time, is also our God today. So we should praise God in spite of the many things, because He is still our God of compassion and our God of comfort. He comforts us in many ways, but for me, the first thing that God really comforts me is through His Word through the Bible, my daily reading of the Bible and study. And I find, I find it so meaningful to me when, when I read His Word. Just let me share with you three particular verses or passages uh, in the Scripture that I have so personalized, I have so reflected uh, into, and this up to now and until today it really helps me a lot especially when i look upon or I, I reflect on this particular crisis that we we have right now number one is god speaks to me through matthew chapter 11 verses 28 to 30. it says there come to me all of you who are weary and burdened and i will give you rest Take my yoke upon you, upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and humble in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. Jesus offered then, and Jesus off still offers today, himself. He offers that, we, he invites that we, we, we come to him. And when we come to him, we find the rest. Again, this kind of rest is not just mere uh, a cozy kind of thing. No? The, the kind of uh, we things are, are, are just things are just easy, but this kind this, this rest here is security. Security in the palm of the Lord. He invites. He offers. Come, and he promises rest. Also, in this passage, he says, Take my yoke upon uh, you and learn from me. All of us in this world, young and old, once we're born, we already have this yoke. The yoke is the kind of, of thing that they put in the working animals during the time, and I think even today, to guide the animals while they work in the field. But the the... The yoke that we, particularly people who do not believe in Christ, people who do not have this genuine saving faith in the Lord Jesus Christ, they carry a worldly yoke which is so burdensome, which is so heavy, and yet they have to go through it. So the Lord says, as you would... Uh, come to me and receive me as your Lord and Savior the Lord will replace that yoke well the yoke of the Lord is still it's still uh, burdensome 
course, there's no there's no yoke that is easy and that is so light and unburdensome. It's still it's still burdensome, but the Lord promises that His yoke is easier because He is gentle and He is humble and His burden is light. Do you find uh, meaning meaning in this verse? I find um, uh, meaning in this verse, and it's very helpful to me. I find it. I find really comfort when I read uh, this passage in Scripture. Another is Philippians chapter uh, four, verses six and seven. It says here, "Do not be anxious about anything, but in everything by prayer and petition." With thanksgiving, present your request to God, and the peace of God, which transcends all understanding, will guard your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. I believe this is one of the passages in the Bible that, in which it's many people today, many Christians today, are really reading, claiming, and applying. This also is actually the first passage in the Scripture that I learned and I memorized when I was a very new Christian. Why? Because ever since and up to now, I think all of us, we go through a certain process of, of troubles, burdens, and anxiety. Whether we like it or not, there's always a temptation for us to, to be tempted or to be anxious, especially when, when we cannot control the things around us. But again, the Lord comes to us, comes to me, and speaks to me, and ministers to me through this passage. That I don't need to be anxious. I don't need to be worrisome. But all I need is to trust Him in prayer. And as I pray, the Lord promises in verse 7, not only peace, but His peace. He says here, the peace of God which transcends all understanding. It's the peace from God. And this kind of peace transcends all our understanding. We are not able to understand it very well. We, we don't a are not able to explain it very well. But we simply experience the kind of peace that comes from God. And this peace will guard our hearts and our minds in Christ Jesus. Which means when we pray, God puts away that anxiety no, he, 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 uh, he, he keeps our hearts guarded in our minds so that when we make decisions particularly uh, crucial decisions we can make decisions that we cannot be sorry of the third passage I'd like to share with you in which uh, we can praise God is in Colossians chapter Three verses 15 to 17 it says let the peace of Christ rule in your hearts since as members of one body you were called to peace and be thankful let the word of Christ dwell in you richly as you teach and admonish one another with all wisdom and as you sing psalms hymns and spiritual songs with gratitude in your hearts to God and whatever you do whether in word or in or deed do it all in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God the Father uh, through Him. That's the promise, or that's the command to keep the peace of Christ in our hearts. Since Christ is already in our hearts, just allow Him to, be, to live comfortably in our hearts by trusting Him and obeying His will. And in that way, we will be able to prevail. We have the strength to carry on uh, what He wants us to do. Just letting the peace of Christ in us, guarding our hearts and our minds. And whatever we do, let's do it in the name of the Lord as we glorify God to our thanksgiving. Nice passages, uh, isn't it? So, again, during this time, we do not only survive, but we prevail as God's uh, couriers of, of God's praise. So we can continue praising God and thanking God. Not only that, it doesn't end there. No? 
uh, the compassion of, of Christ and His comfort given to us does not end there. We, we now become not only as couriers of God's praise, but also channels of God's comfort. Yes, channels of God's comfort. It doesn't only end in us, how God would minister to us, but it continues on through us. And God makes us as His channels of comfort. In verse 4, it says there, who comforts us in all our troubles so that we can comfort those in any trouble with the comfort we ourselves have received from God. Amazing. Let me read it again. He comforts us in all our troubles so that we can comfort those in any trouble with the comfort we ourselves have received from God. So God comforts us and that comfort stays there, ministers to us. But it doesn't stay there only. It doesn't end there. It has a purpose. Now it's time for us to be uh, channels of that comfort. Again, the word comfort here, and by the way, in verses 4 to 7, uh, comfort was written seven times. If it's written that way and number of times, it should mean a lot. Paul simply means, uh, simply say that you better listen up. This is very serious and this is something that you should learn from. We have the God of comfort. The God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the God of com the Father of compassion, and the God of comfort. Again, comfort here is not that uh, easy coziness uh, kind of life it may not be that comfort comfortable it's not that this type of uh, uh, that you are so relaxed it's not even a trouble free life I don't think there is a trouble free life to a normal human being here especially us who are in the middle of this uh, pandemic crisis rather this comfort is a strength in trouble are you in trouble well I am in trouble particularly during this time and many of us not only our country but uh, the whole world so this comfort that God uh, gives to us people of God believers is the strength so we can say that who strengthens us so that we can strengthen those in any trouble with the strength we ourselves have received from God. It says here, for just as the suffering of Christ overflow into our lives, also through Christ, our strength overflows. In verse 6, it says there, we are distressed. It is, if we are distressed, it is for your comfort and salvation. If we are comforted, it is for your comfort, which produces in you patient endurance. That's the, that's the result of God ministering to us, granting us His comfort or strength, so that, in, so that us in any way, we may be able to be channels of that, that we may also bring the comfort of God to others who might be experiencing the same trouble that we have right now. Paul was in a lot of troubles then, and not only him, but many Christians. As he went there and ministered to them, he became a channel of God's comfort. And many people were strengthened. Many people were comforted. In verse 7, And our hope for you is firm, because we know that just as you share in our sufferings, so also you share in our comfort fascinating amazing no? praise God no? so this comfort that we have we are now able to pass it on and as a result just like us to other people this comfort from God this strength from God 
produces patient endurance for us to remain and to move on. This staying power that the Lord has granted us remains there to minister to other people so that others who are ministered also will also pass it on uh, to others. And the key to that, my friends, a major key to that is prayer. If God is able to comfort us and strengthen us as we read His Word, others may, may be comforted or strengthened through us as we pray for them. Not only as we, we, we read or we, we study the Bible with them, particularly when we pray for them and when we pray with them. We become now a uh, catalyst of prayers. That's the third. If we are couriers of God's praise, if we are channels of God's comfort, now we are also catalysts of prayers. When we say catalyst, we are simply promoters. We are agents. We start one, we initiate, we do it, we become example. We are models of this uh, God-glorifying prayers. And wherever we go, we're able to uh, minister to others. Let's read what Paul said in verse 8. We do not want you to be uninformed, brothers, about the hardships we suffered in the province of Asia. Well, if you, if you will read Acts chapter uh, 19, uh, uh, Paul Paul, uh, in his second missionary journey, really had a hard time with these people in uh, Ephesus, uh, in Asia, particularly in this Ephesus. These people there, they were so very uh, religious when it comes to their own gods and goddesses. And Ephesus was, was known in the entire world as the, the, the cradle of the, the goddess Artemis or Diana who is the goddess of fertility and it was it was then when when god uh, the, directed paul to really uh, uh, smash their uh, teachings about their, their their belief and many people turned to the lord in fact many people changed and they were they were converted they got rid of all their uh, uh, books when it comes to sorcery and everything and there was this guy uh, is a, this uh, this silversmith? I think his name is Demetrius, no? and who started a a, uh, a riot against uh, Paul, and he, Paul was in trouble. He almost died there. That's why, after that uh, ordeal, he was able to write his uh, testimony, his ordeal to the church in Corinth. His, he had this problem in Asia. So he went on to say, we were under pressure, far beyond our ability to endure, so that we despaired even of life. Indeed, our hearts were felt the sentence of death. He thought he was going to die. But this happened that we might, we might not rely on ourselves, but on God. Again, this happened that we might not rely on ourselves but on God who raises the dead. Never did Paul rely on himself, but yet he relied on God, knowing and being assured that this God who is protecting him, who is providing for everything he needed, is the God of miracle. He says here, the, the God who raises the dead. So that's the kind of God Paul had. And my friends, this is the kind of God we have. And the power that God used to raise Jesus Christ from the death or from the, from the, the grave is the same power that we have right now. That's why we can prevail. We should prevail. And we prevail by God's word. And we also, need, we also prevail helping others through our prayers and the prayers of others for us. He said in verse 10, He has delivered us from such a deadly peril, and He will deliver us. On Him we have set our hope. 
that we he will continue to deliver us as you help us by your prayers then many will give thanks on be on our behalf for the gracious favor granted us in prayers uh, in answer to the prayers of many paul was simply saying thank you for praying for us as we prayed for you we could have been dead had not been had not uh, been uh, you been praying for us but we we praise god for for you and you continue praying with us as we continue praying on so my friends if paul was like that he 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 was strengthened in trouble as god allowed him to go through troubles god strengthened him god allowed him to prevail not just mere surviving in the same way as people of god today god has created us wired us to be attached to him and in the power of the holy spirit uh, we don't just survive this pandemic crisis but we are to prevail and we should prevail and how do we do that as i conclude again the question is in what ways do we as god's people prevail we as what we become couriers or we are couriers of god's praise that whatever happens we praise and we thank uh, the god who is compassionate the god of all comforts and then we are also channels of god's blessings the the comfort and the strength that we receive from that we receive from him now we pass it on to people who are also in trouble just like us and that would that would really make us most effective it's very difficult to minister to people uh, if you have not experienced uh, the same issue or problem but nowadays it's really the problem of many people that's why through us god's people we may be able to uh, to bring on the blessings of god the comfort of god the strength of god to others by uh, what praying praying for them as we are also catalysts of prayers so ladies and gentlemen during this pandemic time remember you are you are a number one again you are a courier of god's uh, praise you are a catalyst of god's comfort and you uh, no, you are a channel of god's comfort and you are a catalyst someone who can start no, and maintain no? Of, of prayers that is glorifying to god may we trust in the lord especially during this time and may he cause us to be prevailing beyond surviving thank you very much god bless us all thank you for joining us in today's sunday online worship service Join us again next week to hear His message for you and learn from God's Word. If you were touched by the service today, do let us know and send us your story. If you wish to bless our church ministry with financial support, message us through our Facebook page. Thank you and have a fruitful and blessed week. God bless you!